Hi guys, Mark Casey here from Tough Australia. This year we celebrate our 20th anniversary of being in business since Anton Griffiths and Phil Griffiths started the business with just five people. Now we're pushing towards 100 and I wanted to show you the factory, do a quick factory tour and hopefully show you where we've come from. So let's have a look. Okay, we're in the factory. This is our services section. It's a very massive part of our business. It's where you make all our components. At the moment, we can, we can see people are working on some pretty new equipment that we've brought in from Japan, from Amada. And we've got a new brake press over there that Charles is working on. That's got 220 tons of force to bend and shape metal. Behind me is a new Amada six kilowatt laser cutter. And in the background there you can see a tower. That's an 18 meter tower that has different sheets of metal that we can program the machine to cut. So it can cut overnight when there's no one here. So these two pieces of equipment are something we're very proud of. And there's about a $3 million investment between those two. When the company started, we cut sheet metal with a hand plasma by hand. These things all do it from a drawing from our engineers. You plug it in it cuts it and it's extremely quick. The laser can cut up to 25 millimeters of steel or alloy. At the back of our flash six kilowatt laser, we've got a unique piece of equipment here. This little box, it produces its own supply of nitrogen. Normally with lasers, you need a big container of nitrogen. They use a lot of nitrogen. But this is one of the first in Australia. It produces the nitrogen from the air. Other than that, we have to use the big gas tanks behind us there. So this thing is quite amazing what it can do. It's more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, and it, it saves a lot of money. So here we are in the services section. We're going to talk about some of our pipe bender equipment. This is the old, old gear that we used to use. Get a little bit tired and worn out, but we're still using it. And this is the new machine we just got in in the last month. It can bend up to 100 millimeter in diameter alloy with a six millimeter wall, or steel to the same 100 millimeter to a four millimeter wall. If we look over here, we've got dies and the way it's set up, we don't have to change a lot to do different sizes too for our side rails, brush rails for our headboards and our trays. So it's a fantastic piece of equipment and instead of hydraulic motors and hydraulic adjustment, everything is electric so it can be much more accurate. So that's a pipe bender. The start of our bull bar produ production, this is the start of that section. What we're doing over here is making the channels for the bull bar that all the um, tubing, etc., the architecture sits on. So back here we've got the alloy channels being made while in here we've got, the, um, we've got the steel channels being made. This is the start of the actual bull bar production process. And you can see by the channels and the way we're making them, they're pretty strong. They take a lot of abuse. Moving into the next phase of production, it's where the guys tack the components onto the bull bar. So if we look over here, we've got our outside stays, we've got our top tube. We're starting to put our posts together and it's starting to take shape to actually look like a bull bar. So here we are on the side rails or brush rails section of the factory and for every tough bull bar 80-90% of them have our 60 millimeter brush rails, they're very popular particularly the twin brush rails. So each bull bar and side rails or brush rails is made as a set. So we get the bull bar, put it on the jig and then we make a spigot to suit those particular brush rails. So it, things here are handmade. The old way, we've got some new equipment, but it's pretty old style craftsmanship, Aussie craftsmen. So here we are in our tray section. So we make our trays, it's a big part of our business now. We started making our first trays in 2017. 
and since then it's grown to be quite a big part of our operation. The reason we got into trays is a lot of our customers had our bull bars and said, can you make trays? So we started with steel trays, made to be very strong and durable, a little bit wider than the norm so people could carry more, particularly people on the land. Since then we've got into alloy trays, canopies, dog boxes, full fit outs with inverters, and we also do truck bodies and service bodies as well. Here we are on the next step on our journey through the tough group. This is our tough coating section. We believe in trying to do as much as we can in-house, so all our powder coating and painting for our products we do ourselves. We also do powder coating and painting for outside customers as well. So the first step in the coating process is behind me over here. It's the, where we do our abrasive blasting. So we use garnet, which is abrasive material, to take off any mill scale or any impurities off our steel and alloy so that it's nice and clean when it gets in to get coated. In our tough coatings, we do powder coating and two-pack painting predominantly. And this is our low bake spray booth where we apply a two-pack paint so the tray or the bull bar can match the color of your particular vehicle. This booth is linked to the supplier manufacturer in Melbourne by the internet, so if there's a fault in this booth, they can do some work to rectify it remotely. We do a lot of powder coating. Well, why do you get powder coating done? Well, it's a little bit more durable than paint. It's like a polymer that gets tracted onto the metal by elect electrostatic energy. The powder sticks to the metal, then we push the trolley out and it goes into an oven and it's actually baked onto the metal. So all that preparation we've done with the abrasive blasting, it's where it's really important to get a good surface for the powder to stick on so that it's, mel it's melted onto it, melted into the pores of the steel or the alloy to give you a really nice finish. We have sourced and developed our own primer. It's a high zinc primer and we feel that's very important to have this particularly on steel. It's not quite galvanized, but it's got that really good capacity to prevent corrosion. We do that first, we bake that off, and then we put a top coat on with a range of colors. The powder coating range is much wider now than it used to be, but still not as wide as you get with paint. So there's a little bit of a compromise there. So here we are with the trolley of steel, steel material that's been coated in our high zinc primer, which is it's very dark compared to normal primer, which is a gray color. This is almost black, but it gives you really good protection. After it's been primed, you can see where the boys have sanded it down so that it, we get the best smooth finish for the customer. So the hand sanding takes a lot of time, it's expensive, but it gets the best finish. So here we are in the fitting section where the guys put trays on customers' vehicles, bars, rails, UHF radios, winches, suspension upgrades. So this is where the rubber hits the road. We have to get everything spot on for the customer so it's ready for them to pick up or get sent out to them. So here we are at the final leg in our little journey through our tough world. It's at our dispatch section where we prepare our bars and rails and trays canopies to get sent out to customers. Just like to thank everyone for, for watching and listening to what we're doing. But we couldn't have got here without um, the people who've worked here over the years and put in their hard work and the customers who've supported us and supported Australian manufacturing over the last 20 years. So I want to really thank you guys for backing Australian products. Thank you. Mm -hmm.